Hello, this is Professor Bennett from DigitalAudioTheory.com. This programming example comes from Chapter 7, which covers the basics of digital signal processing for audio. So, in this programming example, we will implement both the direct and canonical form filters in code to verify that they do indeed have the exact same effect on a signal. So we're going to start by creating an impulse. Then we're going to pass that impulse through two different sets of difference equations. One that implements the direct form structure and a set of equations that implements the canonical form. So let's take a look at this. So here we have a uh, subfigure A here. You're going to see a direct form. What does direct form mean? It means that the output Y can be uh, stated explicitly in terms of the input X. On the left hand side here you're going to find all of the feed forward taps and on the right hand side you're going to see the feed back taps all coming into one single accumulator. To turn the direct form 1 into a canonical form we need to think about this as almost like two subfilters in cascade with one another. We can think of cutting this accumulator in half. We've got the feed forward section and the feedback section. Now the first step to convert this to canonical form is to swap these two sections. So we're going to duplicate this accumulator and you're going to see it twice. So we're going to bring this feedback section over to the left hand side here in part B. So you see coming down to the delay, over to the 0 0.1, up to the accumulator. And we're going to take this feed forward section, and it's going to move over to the right hand side of the block diagram. Now you might think this is weird moving the parts around, but you have to remember um, this is a linear filter. And so the order of these operations does not matter. And we're going to prove it in this programming example. The last step to go from part B to part C, where we have the canonical form, is to see that the output of this accumulator, we have to give it a letter. Let's call it W. It's not Y, it's not X, let's call it W. Um, that's what's feeding this feedback tap as well as this feed forward tap. So we've got W going into both of these delays. So the state of these are always going to be identical. So that means one of these is redundant. And we can remove one and have a single, look down on C here, we can have a single delay feeding both the feedback part and the feed forward part. Now this is the advantage of canonical form. You can reduce the number of delays compared to uh, the direct form. But now we're not going to have a single difference equation of y in terms of x we're going to have um, y in terms of w because look w is what's feeding this input to the output accumulator and it's also feeding at least w of n minus one is this input to the output accumulator so y is in terms of w and w is in terms of x so for the canonical form we're going to have two sets of equations compared to the direct form where we're going to have one set of equation. But on the flip side of that, on the direct form, we're going to have to keep track of two delay states, this feedback delay state and the feed forward delay state, versus in canonical form, we only need one memory element to keep track of w of n minus 1. So that's the differences here. So in order to preserve these delayed copies of the input and output, we're going to create variables called xnm1 and ynm1. This is to hold um, the delayed x and the delayed output y for the direct form. So these are going to hold x of n minus 1 and y of n minus 1 respectively. And these are going to be initialized to 0. So that's what we have here. For canonical form, we only need one of these variables. We're going to call it 
w in m1 for w of n minus 1. And it's also going to be initialized to 0. So we're going to run both of these filters at the exact same time. Note that the character sequence in m1 is a mnemonic for n minus 1. And you could replace the 1 with 2, 3, 4, whatever the delay amount is. And this is commonly used in DSP programming. Now let's take a look. Let's execute these difference equations here. So let's start off with direct form. That's these lines right here. So the output equals, well, look, uh, let's pull up the, oh, I lost it. I lost it. The, um, if you recall from the uh, block diagram, we had a scaled version of the input plus a scaled version of a, the input delayed and some feedback coming in from the output. Once we've calculated our current output sample, we need to take our current input sample and set it to x and m1 for the next time through. And we need to take our current output and set it to y in m1 again for the next time through. We can execute the uh, canonical form at the exact same time. We're going to save it into a different output variable. Here we had ydf for the direct form output. Here we're going to have yc for the canonical form output. But remember, we can't have y just in terms of x. We have y in terms of w. And we're going to have w in terms of x. So we're going to have two equations here in order to produce our output. But we're going to have only a single uh, delay to keep track of. So our w in m1 is going to be equal to our current w again for the next time through this for loop. And if we run this for loop, and we observe the outputs, we're going to look at direct form and canonical form. And let's see what these outputs look like. So this is the impulse response. Again, remember what we're passing through here. We're creating a 1 followed by several zeros. This is just a, an impulse that we're passing through. The impulse response of these two filters is, in fact, identical. This column is uh, the direct form output, and this column is the canonical form output. So that's it for chapter 7. Um, the next programming example is going to come from chapter 8. Thanks for watching.